And welcome back in Wells Fargo Arena, downtown Des Moines, Iowa. We are set for semifinal round action in Class 1A. And on the match right now, from North Lynn, we have Brock Henderson, the freshman for the Lynx. He's 37-4. and four. He's taking on Justin Portillo from Clarion Goldfield. He's a sophomore at 24-2. and two. Well, Jamie, we talked to Coach Bridgewater uh, in between rounds here, and I said, you know, uh, Brock Henderson isn't the biggest in, of the six-pounders. He weighed in at 105. Uh, these 106-pounders now are, are weighing in some, some of them in the neighborhood of 110. So that five pounds, looking out there, that five pounds is, is a huge difference as Portillo from Clarion Goldfield, the transfer from Ohio into Clarion Goldfield, is a huge 106-pounder. He's going to snap Henderson down and hit a go-behind and pick up a two-point takedown, I believe. Not signal yet, as Henderson's doing a great job blocking him off. The wiry 106-pounder from North Lynn, the freshman, is doing a sensational job blocking off the much bigger Portillo. I know they're both 106-pounders, but there's a huge difference right there. There's a two-point takedown by Portillo. He goes right to a drive cradle, and he's got Brock Henderson going to his back. 30 seconds left to go. Henderson trying to bridge off that back to keep from getting pinned. He's got that right shoulder up. And Portillo locking in that drive cradle. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, this kid is physical. We saw him help Claren Goldfield to the team dual title on Wednesday as Claren Goldfield knocked off top-ranked Alburnett and then beat uh, Don Bosco in the finals to claim the uh, championship pro trophy. Four seconds left to go. It's going to be a three-point near fall for Portillo, and he's going to go up 5-0 after the first period. Well, if Brock Henderson can weather the storm here, we'll see what he can do. Going to defer, and he's going to go neutral. So we'll see if he can get his offense going from his feet. Staggered stance by Henderson. Portillo in a staggered stance, leading with his left leg. Henderson leading with his right leg. Sweep single by Henderson. He's in deep. Let's we'll see, he's going to elevate Portillo. Let's see if he can turn this into, into two. He's going to try to pop his head out. He had good luck with this shot against uh, Schmitz from Don Bosco. He's going to try to pop his head out and cut across the hips of Portillo. He does. Let's see if he can turn this into two. Portillo hanging on. There's a two-point takedown by Henderson. Henderson now is going to scoop a chicken wing. Nice job by the freshman, Zach McCool. 5-2. Exactly what he needed to do right there. And down 5 nothing, getting put to his back. Uh, gets in on a nice shot and finishes it. Nice job by the freshman. I'll tell you what, uh, great job. <clears throat> great job out in front of us. There's a two-point reversal on the restart by Portillo. Brandon Moyer from Alburnett in a semifinal. Could have an all-Northeast Iowa final here if Henderson would squeak out a win. And uh, Moyer from Alburnett. 103 left to go. Henderson's going to get thrown to his back for a two-point, for a three-point tilt. And we're seeing it right here, Zach. The uh, Portillo, uh, much bigger, much stronger uh, than Henderson right now. Yeah, he's really... Really controlling the match, really controlling uh, Henderson. Um, he's just got to find a way, find a way to win this match. Ben Moore from Albertet getting thrown to his back. I think that's one of the twins from Highland Riverside. The other one's at 113, I believe. <clears throat> Henderson to his feet now, 26 seconds left. He's going to split the hands of Pertillo. Pertillo will drop down on a single. Henderson and a wizard, he's going to stuff the head. And Portillo's going to go behind and cover the hips and off the edge of the mat they go. 19 seconds left. It's a 10-2 decision right now for the sophomore. He's only a sophomore from Clarion Goldfield. 27-2 now, going undefeated on Wednesday. That's 3-0. And then a couple of matches here. 27-2, 10 seconds left to go in the second period. Ben Moore getting uh, thrown to his back and pinned for Alburnett. <clears throat> Third period. It's going to be Portillo's choice. He's going to choose down. So if, if you're Brock Henderson, you got to continue wrestling here, guys, and, uh, and you know try to make something happen. Well, you do, and, you know, that's down here at the state tournament. We've seen a lot of crazy things happen here. You know, we've seen guys with big leads get thrown on their back and pinned, and, uh, you never know what can happen, so you have to keep working your offense because 
uh, it, it was good enough to get you here. It was good enough to get you pins throughout the season. Uh, it might help here in the state tournament. Well, we found out that no lead is big enough. So you're exactly right, Jamie. No lead is big enough. And uh, Henderson can keep the tempo up and, uh, you know, grind a little bit on Portillo. Maybe work a tilt, maybe work a wing of some sort and maybe have an opportunity, <clears throat> an opportunity to throw uh, Portillo to his back. There's a long switch attempt by Portillo. Nicely counter. Granby rolled by Portillo. He's going to kick out, try a switch. Henderson's going to follow him. Henderson now dives in on a single. He's got the right leg of Portillo wrapped up. He's got the right leg of Portillo wrapped up. And Portillo is going to, going to free that leg. And he's going to pull himself on top of Henderson. It might be a two-point reversal. Although Henderson still maintaining control of that right leg of Portillo. Might get a stalemate here. Our referee looking closely. Uh, looking closely. 55 seconds left to go. There's a two-point reversal by Portillo. So it's 12 to 2 now with 50 seconds left. Now we've talked about the uh, experience here as a freshman. Max Lyon from Epworth, uh, uh, Epworth Western Dubuque. And now, <clears throat> now a very good freshman here for the Northland Lynx. Getting some very, very valuable state meet experience. 41 seconds left to go. There's the restart. 36 seconds left to go. Henderson underneath. Portillo doing a nice job riding on top. But again, much bigger, much stronger. And uh, the freshman uh, from North Lynn, it appears with 25 seconds left to go, he's going to make something big happen. He's going to make something big happen or he's going to get thrown to that He's going to get thrown to uh, the consolation side, and we'll find out who his opponent will be. Ten seconds left, and that's uh, as the clock winds down. Brock Henderson will lose his first match of the state tournament by a score of 12 to two. But that's a very, very good uh, Justin Pertillo. I think he's got a great uh, shot at winning this tournament. Henderson not happy. That's only his fifth loss of the season, but you know what? You're uh, wrestling a very, very good uh, Clarence Goldfield Cowboy. Oh, you are, and unfortunately, he's going to bump to the backside. I didn't see who won. It was either Tanner Greenwald or Cody Bird from West Sloan, Westwood Sloan. So uh, a tough match regardless for Brock Henderson. And we're waiting for the 126-pounders to take the mat. Jared Coyle from Maquoketa. Makokina Valley will, will be up will be up on the next uh, on deck on the next open mat we'll have Jared Coyle so while we wait for him let's take another short time out and we'll be back with the senior from Makokina Valley taking on Trent Johnson from Dyke New Hartford stay with us we got more action from Class 1A 2014 State Wrestling Tournament from the well on Eastern Iowa Sports Station, Mix 94.7, KMCH. Welcome back. Semifinal round action and consolation round quarterfinals. Here for you in Class 1A. And we've got Jared Coyle up for the Wildcats as he's going to be up on mat number 8. And he is taking on, taking on Trent Johnson from Dyke New Hartford. Well, uh, this is a very fine-looking uh, freshman from Dyke New Hartford. Short, stocky, uh, very well put together, and he's going to hit Coyle with a Kelly, and Coyle does a nice job fighting out it, and he's going to switch sides, and he's going to toss Coyle to his back. Coyle's going to have to cover up. There's a two-point takedown by Trent Johnson, and Johnson's coming right out there, uh, Zach, and showing a little strength and a little muscle on the senior from Maconkata Valley. Yeah, he's very strong right there, and he chain wrestling. Uh, didn't get the first move, got, but got the second move. And 1.30, 30 seconds into the match, Coyle has some work to do, and we're going to get a caution against Johnson for starting before the whistle, or actually starting uh, out of position. There's the whistle. There's the hard chop. Hard chop by Johnson, and uh, he will flatten Coyle out. Now chicken wing by Johnson. Tight waist and a chicken wing. Again, you win this match, you still wrestle back for a third and fourth. You lose, you're going to wrestle for seventh and eighth. We have Sawyer Amling will be our next wrestler at 138. He'll be taking on Colby Br Brutrude from Northwood Kensett. 
There's Coyle with a nice stand up, but he left his arms behind. Johnson still has a chicken wing. Now he's got a double chicken wing locked up. 51 seconds left to go in the first period. Double chicken wing by Trey, Trent Johnson. He's going to try to crank Coyle to his back with the double chicken wing. Coyle doing a nice job. I'll tell you what, uh, that's a lot of pressure on the head and chest of, of uh, Jared Coyle. Johnson actually has his wing up too high at Zach, and that's a good thing for Jared Coyle. Yeah, it is, but now he's really pushed putting pressure forward, um, getting it a little bit tight. Um, I'm working to try to get him, but Coyle's doing a nice job of facing away from him. Um, I don't think he's going to be able to turn him here. Well, I don't either. Ten seconds left to go, and Coyle really working hard. Trent uh, Johnson from Dyke, New Hartford, keeps the double chicken wing locked up, and we're going to go to the second period. That's, you know... As easy as that takedown was, I'm surprised Johnson didn't let Coyle back up. We're going to see his choices. It's going to be Coyle's choice. He's going to defer over to Johnson, and Johnson is going to go down. Dyke New Hartford Wolverines. This is a very fine freshman at 42 and 4. Jared Coyle, a very fine senior. His record now is 47 and 6. So his 54th match of the year right here. There's a stand up by Johnson. He's going to score one. Coyle tries to tries to launch him over and under. I'm not sure that's where you want to be against the uh, freshman. There's a Kelly by Johnson, nicely blocked off by Coyle. So Coyle has learned a thing or two about this freshman from Dyke. And again, now you got to take into account you know, that you're a senior, you've wrestled here before, and you got to keep pushing it, pushing the tempo. We saw Jared Coyle get down in that first match. 5-0, and then he fought back to win 14-11 over Michael Olson from Lake Mills. So we'll see if he can do it again against another very good freshman. There's a long shot by Coyle. Johnson underhooks him, lifts him up, pitches him to the side, covers the hips of Coyle. It's now 5-0. So Jerry Coyle finds himself down in another hole. 109 left to go, an inside wrist now by Johnson. Spiral ride, right, inside wrist. <coughs> Coyle almost throws Johnson to his back. Coyle in good position here to pick up two. Let's see if he can pick up that two point reversal. He does. It's five to two right now, so he's closed the gap. Boy, he almost had a four point move out of it. Tight waist now by Coyle. Johnson up on all four. Stand up by Johnson. Splitting the hands of Coyle. Coyle's going to cut him loose. Six to two. Six to two is your score right now with 30 seconds left to go in the second period. So if Jared Coyle, he deferred, it's going to be his choice to start the third period. If he could somehow pick up a two-point takedown here and close this gap to six to two, that would be huge. Two-on-one Russian tie by Johnson. He's got the right arm of, or the left arm of Jared Coyle tied up. There comes that Kelly again by Johnson. Very tough with it as he drops underneath Coyle. Coral again does a nice job pushing the hip away. Six seconds left to go, and we get a stalemate. So Zach uh, Jared Coral down by four. It's going to be his choice to start the third. I suppose you got to go back down underneath. Yeah, you got to close the gap. You got to go get that one point, get after him, maybe feet to back after that, and then we go neutral. Well, I'm not sure about that. Coral did a nice job getting out early. You know, now he hasn't taken Johnson down yet. I like his chances underneath scoring an escape. Then it's 6-3, to three and the takedown makes it 6-5. to five. He's four points down, but uh, his coaches know him. There's that Coyle drops in on a single. Coyle drops in on a single. There's a reshot by Johnson. Coyle's going to try to throw him. And I got Johnson momentarily off, off, off balance. Had him going to his back, but Johnson readjusted, and now Johnson uh, face down to the mat, and we're going to get a stalemate back to neutral. We've got to go. Jared Coyle needs some sort of huge, uh, huge uh, move right here, at least a, a four-pointer to tie it up. There's a two-on-one Russian tie to the left side. Johnson doing a nice job tying the arms of Jared Coyle up, and. Um, you know, he's up by four, so the freshman's doing a nice job keeping Coyle at bay. 103 left to go in this match. Now under a minute, Jared Coyle shows up this, this uh, third period. 
And after a minute and three of wrestling, nothing to show for it. 57 seconds. There's the whistle on the restart to call the stalemate. You gotta get a restart. Cora needs a, Cora needs a throw. Cora needs to find something that's gonna toss Johnson to his back. We'll see if he can do it. He's got 43 seconds left. He's trying, he's got an underhook. Now he's gonna cast himself around. You gotta cut him loose. Six to four, seven to four. Johnson now turns away from Coyle, faces him. <coughs> Coyle faces it. Coyle faces Johnson now, 30 seconds. Coyle's gotta get going. There's a double underhook by Coyle. He's gonna try an inside trip. He's got Johnson out of position. Let's see if he can throw him here and pick up, uh, pick up the two and the more. 19 seconds left. Coyle doing a nice job. Johnson now down on all fours and he's squeezing the arms of Coyle together so Coyle can't get underneath him and, underneath him and elevate him. Nine seconds left and warning against Johnson for controlling Coyle. There's Coyle with the knee tip. And that's going to do it. Coyle is going to lose that match, seven to four. So Jared Coyle will wrestle for seventh and eighth tomorrow. Seventh or eighth, not where he wants to be. But I'll tell you what, that's a very fine freshman, you guys. All right, Jared Coyle losing four, seven to four. Weight class 138 should be up here shortly. And they just called the first one, so. Okay, so we've got uh, Sawyer Amling taking on Colby Bertrude from Northwood, Kensett. He's a junior at 37. He's at 37 and six. Featured match in front of us, we've got Carter Happel from Lisbon. And he's taking on undefeated J.D. Raider, the junior from South Hamilton Jewel, who's 39 and 0. Happel is 49, 51 and 0. So I tell you what, uh, 51 and 0, 39 and 0. That's 100 to zero, right there. These guys know how to wrestle, and they both know how to win. Matt seven. Matt seven. Sawyer. Very good. We'll see Amling. We can kind of spy Carter Happel. We're going to do updates on his match as he is up 2-0 right now on Raider. Wow. So he makes it look pretty easy down there, doesn't it? He certainly does. Uh, he's going to pick up a three-point near fall. And he's on his way to uh, probably becoming a two-time champ as a sophomore. He might be in line to be Lisbon's next four-time champ. He's got Raider on his back. Could be another fall for Happel. He might pin his way through this tournament. He had a first round fall over Brett Carstens from Coon Rapid. And he had a fall over Hunter Washburn. And uh, now he's looking for a fall against uh, Raider from South Hamilton. All right, Bertrude from Northwood Kent said he's a junior. He's 37 and six. Catching up with Coach Alex Hanna in between here. He said that uh, Sawyer Ambly needs to keep working and he commented on that match that he lost. He was in on those shots, Zach. You made that comment too. He was in on the shots and didn't finish them. I was also talking to him uh, earlier on, and you know, he's he's doing a nice job of hitting very very nice shots, but he's coming up and coming around the waist instead of staying low on the legs. Well, he's just got two quick takedowns there, and that's what he's doing right now. Is he's staying low and he's keeping his feet moving, and he's blocking the knees of Bertrude and uh, doing a very, very nice job up on top now as he's got a tight waist with the left and he's working a head lever on the right side of Bertrude. And uh, I'll tell you what, uh, he's up four to one with a couple of very, very nice double leg takedowns. J.D. Raider down 5-0. Carter Happel up now after one, 5-0. Sawyer Amling doing a very fine job riding Bertrude. I'm surprised he didn't cut him loose as easy as those doubles were and try to build this lead a little bit. Roger, I'd love to see him cut him again and get after his offense, continue to build that lead just like you said. After Amling's match, we will have a fairly long break and we won't have another wrestler to weight class 195 and that will be Tyler Hoffman from East Buchanan trying to stay undefeated, trying to go 43 and 0 and then it'll be Ryan Parmley and then Tyler Yankovic. So uh, top of the weights, we will be very, very busy. 
Amlin up four to one, 15 seconds. A switch attempt by Bertrude. Nicely followed with the tight waist by Amlin. 10 seconds left to go, and you don't want to cut Bertrude loose. Bertrude's going to turn and face Amlin. Amlin's going to drop in on a double. And I'll tell you what, that was a that was a nice job by Amlin showing some physicality, Zach. I like that aggression right there, you know. Puts it in his opponent's head that he's he's getting after and wants this match. All right, uh, five seconds left. Amlin picked up uh, Bertrude and drove him off the mat, drove that, uh, drove his rib right into the rib cage of Bertrude. Was that nothing illegal about it. It was just a solid physical move. Amlin's choice, he's got the green leg bands on. He's going to defer over to Bertrude, and Bertrude's going to choose down. Northwood Kensett way up there in north central Iowa. <clears throat> got Jaron Glosser and Connor Shalista. At 138, it's three to three. Quite a match there. Amlin up on top, right in a tight waist. Connor Shalista trying to join Zach Fowler in the finals for the Albernet Pirates. The Albernet Pirates will win the 1A uh, team title here. As they are up, uh, they are up by uh, over 20 points, I believe. One point escape by Bertrude. And Amlin goes right back to work on a single. He's got that leg up, and let's see if he can back trip. He cuts across to a double. Let's see if he can turn Bertrude over, and he's off the edge of the map. Amlin takes a peek at the official and says, what you talking about? I was still in. <laughs> 21 left to go. 4-2 to two lead now by Amlin. 7-1 lead by Carter Happel to start the third. Four to two lead now, one minute and four seconds left. Amlin trying to set up another takedown here. He's got the right elbow of Bertrude controlled. And again, uh, Amlin has slowed his pace down. And once you do that, you let your opponent back into the match. Uh, uh, Zach, uh, Amlin started with a high tempo, and now he's slowed it way down. Yeah, and Amlin's doing a nice job of staying after it. Um, you know, but uh, Bertrude hasn't taken a shot until right now. Um, who was in on Amling. Yeah, Bertrude took a shot on Amling, and Amling's going to come out of here. He's going to get in a scramble situation. He's got to be very careful here as he's wrapped around the waist of Bertrude, and we've got a stalemate. Glosser pinning Shalista. Glosser from uh, Eddieville Blakes Blakesburg has a double chicken wing on Shalista. Could win by a fall. J.D. Raider coming on, not coming on strong here. Happel up 8-1. 33 seconds left to go. Amling and Bertrude, neutral, on their feet. Amling trying to measure Bertrude and set up that double leg takedown again. One thing Amling doesn't do, Zach, I'd like to see him do it just a little bit more, taking some hand control and working the snaps on the head. He's not heavy on Bertrude's head at all. Yeah, he needs to continue what he did in the first period here. It's, like you said, it... it Slow down big time. Now he's starting to move his feet a little bit more, get some motion. That's what we want to see out of Amley. 13 seconds left to go in the second period. He's hanging on to a slim 4-2 to two lead. The way this thing started, we thought it was going to be over early as Amley had two quick takedowns and build a 4-1 lead. Now Bertrude has, has closed the gap with an escape. It's 4-2. to two. Carter Happel with 22 seconds left. Uh, he will not pin his way through this tournament. He is up 8-1. to one. As J.D. Raiders caught fire, there's a sweep single by Happel. He's going to score two. He goes up 10-1 to one now. All right, 149, third period underway. Inside stand-up by Amling. Bertrude drops in, a two-point reversal by Glosser, and he goes up 10-3 to three on Shalista. 137 and counting. Amling based out, based out underneath. I tell you what, you got to keep moving. Again, you let Bertrude stay in the match, and you know the longer he stays in the match, the tougher he gets. Carter Apple will win by major decision, 10 to 1. So he will he will go to the finals. Sawyer Amling belly down, might get a stalling call against Amling. No no offense whatsoever underneath. He's kind of content to be. Uh, 
staying with that uh, two-point lead, and I'm sure we're going to get a stalling against Amblin here pretty soon, and that's exactly what uh, Coach Hanna was talking about. You know, when you get an opportunity to dominate somebody, you got to keep the keep the pressure on, keep the tempo up. Yeah, he gives you know as a gives his opponent some hope um, in this match, which he never should have after he came out in the first period and took him down right away with with two shots and two takedowns. And here we go. 37 seconds left. Bryce Paul from Albernet in a semifinal out in front of us. Two point takedown for him. Connor Shaliste in the semifinal. He is down 10 to 3. 33 seconds left to go. Amling to his feet. I'm telling you what, uh, no movement. You know, you're going to let uh, Bertrude ride you out the whole third period. You might win this match. We'll see if we get a stalling call. I'm surprised we haven't got a stalling call on Amling as he has completely, basically shut down this period, Zach and Jamie. He's, he's going to win this match. He's up uh, four to two with six seconds. He scored those four points in the first 20 seconds. That might be a two-point reversal. No points as time expired. So Amling scored those four points in the first 30 seconds of the match, and then the, the next five minutes and 30 seconds didn't score a point, but you know, we talked about it, a win's a win, and uh, he will win that four to two. And he will wrestle for fifth and sixth or third and fourth. And he's and gonna have Connor Shalista um, on that backside. Connor Shalista and Sawyer Amling. That was a rematch of the district final, which uh, Shalista winning that match. All right. Well, gentlemen, we've got to wait till weight class 195 and Tyler Hoffman. They're at weight class 152 right now. So we will have to take a break and then we will be back in uh, probably, would you say, about 10 minutes or so. So we'll send it back to the station for a couple of tunes and some announcements, maybe some weather. Then we'll be back with Tyler Hoffman, then Ryan Parmalee, and then we'll finish tonight's action with Tyler Yankovic. Stay with us. You won't want to miss any of it. we got more exciting hold-by-hold -hold action right here from the well on Mix 94.7 KMCH. Welcome back in. Class 1A semifinals. As we're going to have Tyler Hoffman from East Buchanan coming up here. As Hoffman will be taking on at weight class 195. He's going to be taking on Trey Sander. Taking on Trey Sander from Exira Elkhorn Kimbleton. And Sander is a senior at 44 and 2. Hoffman a senior for East Buchanan at 43 and 0. A good match we should have there. And interesting enough there, Jamie, Sander was a district runner up and uh, finds himself in the semifinal round match here. And Elkhorn Kimbleton, uh, straight west, western Iowa. Uh, coming in here to the uh, Wells Fargo Arena. And that's going to be quite a semifinal round match. Tyler Hoffman trying to stay undefeated. He's 43-0 and right now. And we'll see if he can keep that undefeated record into the finals. He wins this match. He will improve his finish from last year by one step. And uh, that's a one-step minimum. Third last year. If he wins this next match, he'll be at least second. But uh, he's been wanting to be on that top podium the whole year. Dylan Winfield from Albernet up 6-0 on the undefeated uh, wrestler from uh, Ottawa. 52 seconds, and Dylan Winfield getting quite a match. Winfield has op opened this match up with a five-point throw. And uh, after that, it's been uh, the wrestler from Monona applying a lot of pressure. So we've had some great matches here. Then after uh, Hoffman, we'll have Ryan Parmley from Maconkana Valley, and then we'll finish up tonight's action with Tyler Yankovic. Tyler Yankovic from uh, Maconkana Valley. So we'll have the Wildcats back to back here. We had Jared Coyle earlier, and he lost a very tough match, seven to four. And we'll see if uh, Ryan Parmley and Tyler Yankovic can get themselves into the finals for Coach Tim Andrews and the Wildcats. That would be uh, that would be outstanding. 
Well, gentlemen, we've seen some tremendous matches here in Class 1A. There's going to be some fun finals. There's going to be some uh, fun finals tomorrow. Uh, tomorrow night in Class 1A. It's going to be very, very interesting. And Hoffman's going to... All right, we'll listen to our PA guy. Okay, so Tyler Hoffman will be the next match up. 45 seconds left to go. And we've got an injury on mat number three. That was going to be the next available match. 13 seconds left over here with Winfield. Uh, Winfield will go to the finals, and he will join uh, Zach Fowler and Bryce Paul. Albernet will have three finalists. Albernet is now behind in the team score. They had a 20-some point lead coming into this this round and Eddieville Blakesburg has overtaken them. So that's going to be quite a uh, consolation round. Could be could determine those uh, those uh, team points. <clears throat> All right, Tyler Hoffman taking the mat. Mat number three or mat number five, I believe. As uh, we see uh, Coach Lennox. Coach Lennox over there in the corner with Tyler Hoffman. Trey Sander, Xyra, Elkhorn, Kimbleton. And uh, again, as Jamie said, he's 44 and 2. Having a fine season. He was beating the district. I'm not sure who by. Probably Ben Wellman from Tri Center Neola, who's 41 and 0. So a tough, tough district out there. So uh, Sander, Sander is a senior. So we got two outstanding seniors. You know, guys, one thing in this tournament, we've seen some really, really good seniors, and we've seen some really, really good upcoming freshmen. It's, been, it's just been interesting. Lots of good upperclassmen and lots of good freshmen. Well, with the, with the old going out, it's time to bring in the new, and we're definitely doing that this year. Is uh, like you said, just a lot of a lot of good a lot of good kids coming in here, and you're going to find that every year at, here at the state tournament. Well, we are underway. Trey Sander and Tyler Hoffman, and this is going to be a doozy. Ryan Parmley from the Coconut Valley. We might have three wrestlers going at the same time here. Ryan Parmley. Ryan Parmley will be next up on the available map. There's a double leg by Sander in deep on Hoffman. Hoffman has to go to a, a strong down block. Now front headlock by Hoffman. He's going to try to cut the corner to the right side of Sander. Should get a stalemate right there. Thank you very much. No action taking place. Uh, Trey Sanders now has got to go to the blood corners. He bumped his nose. He's got to go to the blood corner there and uh, get, a, get a little bit of Vaseline. It looked like he had a cut right on his chin where his, uh, where his chin guard for his headgear uh, meets his lip. So he got some Vaseline on it. We're back to action. 114 left to go. Guys, we haven't seen too many uh, uh, people that could go physical with Tyler Hoffman up to this point, but it appears that this Trey Sander uh, uh, can, Jamie. That's looking like that. That should be two. Yes, it is. And Hoffman's going to pick up a two-point takedown, so nice job by him coming out and getting that takedown. He's going to go up 2 nothing. That was a very good go behind Hoffman showing a little bit of quickness here. Again, the top half of the bracket is Ben Wellman from Tri-Center Neola. He's 41-0. and 0. And uh, I think he's taking on Christopher Brinks from South Winnesheek, who's 45 and 3. That match is going as 1 0 in favor of Wellman from Tri Center. Stand up by Sander. Hoffman's going to latch around the waist. He's got a half Nelson, and he's going to latch around the waist. Sander doing a nice job catching the heels. Hoffman has to drop in on a single. He's got the left leg of Sander picked up. He cuts across to a double. And Sanders got to go back. He's got to go belly down. Matt number six right in front of us. And this is going to be uh, from Lawton Bronson, Blake Sappingfield. He's a senior at 34 and four. 
So we'll see if Ryan Palmer, guys, you talked about it. This has been the round. This has been the round that has been the thorn in the side to Ryan Palmley. We'll see if he can get over the hump this year and uh, turn this thing into a, a win and get himself into the finals. But again, Sappingfield, Sappingfield 38. Uh, he's 36 and four right now. This will be his 41st match and he is a senior. He is a senior. So we'll see what Ryan Parmley, Ryan Parmley only lost one match so far this year and that was to Tyler Hoffman. I think that was the first match of the year. <clears throat> All right, two to one is your lead by Tyler Hoffman. McCulkin Valley switching their single singlets. Tyler, uh, Ryan Parmley puts on the all gold singlet. They had the white ones on for the first match. Now they put on their all, all gold singlets. There's a throw by attempt by Parmley. And the sapping field squares him off. Stalemate over on the match or left. That's going to be technical violation by uh, Sander. He locks his hands. Carmelie in on a shot. It's going to be, he was in deep, but he did a great job of getting in on a front headlock. Did sapping field. And we're going to get a stalemate there. 0-0, zero, zero, 124 left to go first period. There's a stand-up by Hoffman, and Sanders jumps in on a bear hug and back trips, uh, back trips uh, Hoffman to the mat. Hoffman has to bail out and go belly down so he doesn't give up any back points. And uh, nice job by Hoffman. Sanders tries to put a cross body right in. Hoffman grabs the heel and flips it over his back, and he's going to pick up a two-point reversal. He goes up now 5-1. to one. Parmalee in on another shot. We're going to get another stalemate at Sappingfield. Goes to that front headlock, and that's where we sit. And we're still 0-0, minute left to go, first period. I think I'd like to see Palmer just lock onto this guy and launch him. Tyler Hoffman, 56 seconds, up on top, right in the claw. There's a roll by, by Sander, and he's got a two-point reversal on Hoffman, and Hoffman was very close to giving up two going to his back. It's 5-3 to three now with 44 seconds left, so Sander... Sander closing the gap on Hoffman, so Hoffman can't relax here. He's got to keep wrestling Hoffman to his feet. He's going to split the hands of, Hoff of Sander. A standing switch attempt by Hoffman and a re-switch by Sander. Now, now an escape by Hoffman. Oh, there's the throw. <laughs> That's two. And a a throw by oh, attempt wow. by Sappingfield. Parmalee throws a lateral <laughs> drop on the edge of the mat. Gets the fall. There's a fall for Ryan Parmalee. Uh, One minute that was and 47 <laughs> seconds. <laughs> wow. Wow. Uh, <laughs> one by fall. What a throw and by that. Ryan Parmalee. A lateral drop off the edge of the mat. And I think even Sappingfield has a smile on his face. Well, then he picked him up. Sappingfield was trying to get off the edge of the mat. Parmalee picked him up and brought him in. <laughs> Sappingfield smiling. Usually you wouldn't think a kid would be smiling and laughing after getting pinned in the semifinals, but Ryan Parmalee, one minute, 47 seconds, picks up the fall and gets himself into the finals. Well, you know, just we were just kind of waiting for him, and, and uh, he launched him. And, and he was in trouble because Sappingfield did a little duck under, had Parmalee going to his back. Parmalee squared up and quickly hit that lateral drop. And throws him to his back, picked him back up, brought him in bounds, and picks up the fall and will wrestle in the finals tomorrow night for the Wildcats. He's got some great hips. So uh, he finally got the breakthrough. Now he's going to have to take on uh, the winner of Vinnie Harvey down there. Harvey up 2-0. to zero. Yeah, and those two split last year here. Well, Hoffman now A up 8-3. Sander tried to close the gap on him, but Hoffman up eight to three. Now a takedown by Hoffman. He's up ten to three now. He has put the pressure on. He has put the pressure on Sander. And with 57 seconds left to go here, as long as Hoffman doesn't get himself into trouble here, Sander trying to uh, Sander trying to roll as Hoffman put the cross body right in. Now Hoffman staying behind the arms of Sander, and Sander finding the edge of the mat. Sander finding the edge of the mat. Hoffman uh, gets up and uh, he's going to follow Sander back to the center of the mat. There's the reset. 
And the switch attempt by Sander. I tell you, right now, uh, Zach, it's the strength of Tyler Hoffman showing on uh, Trey Sander. Yeah, he's done a great job this entire match. Got himself in trouble in a few situations there, but he's controlled this entire match. Uh, great offense, um, great ride, everything he's doing right here. Wow. I love that because you hear it in the auditorium. Everybody saw that throw, and uh, that, was, uh, that was quite exciting. 12 seconds left to go. Hoffman's going to win this match. He's going to punch his ticket to the finals with a 10-3 decision over a very, very scrappy Trey Sander from Exira, Elkhorn Kimbleton. Sander's going to score a one-point escape now. It's 10-4. That's going to be the final score. Tyler Hoffman to the finals with a very fine 10-4 decision over a very good Trey Sander. So a Hoffman at 182 will have his opponent up shortly. And uh, standing in the wings is uh, Tyler Yankovic. He's up right now on mat number four. We are 30 seconds. We are 30 seconds at, uh, left in this first period. And he's got quite a match at 285. They never the clock over there on Harvey's match. This would be uh, Riley Howell from Wapolo. He's the number one ranked heavyweight in the state. He is undefeated. He's 30 and 0, 32 and 0, and Yankovic coming in at 50 and 0. So both these guys uh, have yet to taste defeat. So uh, quite a match going on here. Yankovic in on a double. He drives Howell off the edge of the mat. So uh, physically, Yankovic uh, has the edge here by appearance. But uh, Howell, Howell's got some very quick feet. Vinny Harvey winning 3-0. So that will be uh, Ryan Parmley's opponent in the finals, uh, Vinny Harvey, and that will be a rematch. Last year, those two, I think, uh, Jamie, those two wrestled twice and they split one-to-one. -one. I, I believe so. So that little bit of a grudge match for Parmley. It'll be the rubber match, so to speak. Harvey is undefeated, and uh, he's a senior. So there you go. All right, one point escape for Yankovic to start this second period, and he's going to go up. He's going to go up one to zero on Riley Howell. So looking awful good at this point for the senior from Maquoketa Valley. He's going to join his teammate. He's going to try to join his teammate in the finals, and Yankovic has done a nice job. A couple of close matches, four to one, and then three to one in overtime. So uh, we know Yankovic's in good good uh, condition. He's in condition enough to go the extra period when he needs to. We'll see if he can uh, see if he can maintain this lead, this slim lead. Now you're going to get a warning on a howl. And this is what Tyler Yankovic's doing doing a good job this whole tournament, forcing the tempo, forcing the pressure. You know, it's not necessarily Tyler Yankovic getting on a lot of offense and a lot of shots, just a lot of pressure forward, making his oppo opponents move backwards. And that's huge. Now a couple of good head snaps by Yankovic. Hard collar tie by the left with Yankovic. Yankovic trying to throw by on Howell. Howell is very, um, Howell is very, um, I'll tell you what, very deliberate in his stance. And yeah, Yankovic doing a nice job here. Yankovic doing a nice job out in front of us. 33 seconds left. And it's still 1-0 lead for Tyler Yankovic. Got some area wrestlers going to be in the finals tomorrow night. And uh, we've gonna got lots of medals. We haven't counted up our medal total for our area wrestlers, but uh, they're going to take some hardware home. It's been a, a pretty pretty successful tournament for our Eastern Iowa wrestlers. Nine seconds left to go, the second period. We're going to go to the third period, and it's going to be Howell's choice. And I uh, wouldn't be a bit surprised if he's going to choose down. And here it is. Howell will choose down. That's our tuba player from uh, Woodbury Central there, guys. Landed Paulson up 14 42. medals out of our 28, so half. Well, that's you shoot for 50 50 percent, you'd like a little bit more than that, but that, that's pretty good. 
Well, Tyler Yankovic is going to ride Riley Howell. And right now, Yankovic is in great position. He's got Howell belly down. And right now, it's the physicality of Yankovic that's causing Howell some grief. He's up on top riding that inside. He's riding that inside wrist and doing a fantastic job with it. And again, he needs to get out to the side. Now Howell up to all fours. Nice hard tight waist chop by Yankovic. Tight waist chop by Yankovic. Now Yankovic goes to a butcher. Hard cross face from right to left. He's going to curl Howell up. Or if he'd have stayed with it, he might have had Howell going. He might have had Howell going to his uh, back. 107 left to go. An inside wrist now by Yankovic. He's going to try to roll it out. It's stalling against Howell. Yankovic's going to pick up a point. It's two, it's two to zero right now. And Yankovic in really good position as Howell is belly down. 49 seconds left. Again, uh, Howell not able to get away from the grasp of Tyler Yankovic. And there's a roll attempt by Howell. Boy, Ooh, uh, you oh, can oh, see oh, right oh, there oh. how Howell is so dangerous. He almost had Tyler Yankovic in a roll, and Yankovic felt that uh, change of pressure. Now there. I think you're going to see Howell uh, turn on the, hit that second gear here. Takes a long shot. Shoots in underneath Tyler Yankovic. 18 seconds left to go. Long shot by Howell. He's oh. in deep. 11 seconds left to go. Going to get stalling now against Yankovic. 10 Circle. seconds. If he takes, you know, I think Yankovic's afraid to go around him. He's taking a couple shots. Spin around him and get your two. That's right. Looking for a stalling call. And that's going to do it. Yankovic's going to win this right there. Well, oh. We've got some unhappy coaches there from uh, Wapolo. It's going to cost him, I think. That will. He'll, he's going to go see Mr. Rotes at the head table. Two to one. Tyler Yankovic will win. Punch his ticket to the finals. And there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. That's a team point deduction there for Wapolo. I don't think it really matters to them. He wanted to make his point. And he is going, Yankovic is going to take on Landon. Well, Nine seconds left to go. And it looks like he's going to take on Landon Paulson. I'm not sure what that was. <laughs> so Landon Paulson and Tyler Yankovic tomorrow in the finals. Well, that will be a very interesting matchup. We will do a quick recap <clears throat> of all of our area wrestlers and where they will be in tomorrow's action. As we start in weight class 106, Brock Henderson from North Lynn is in the Constellation semifinals. He'll take on Tanner Greenwald from Wilton in the Constellation semis. Weight class 126, Jared Coyle from Maquoketa Valley will wrestle for 7th and 8th place. He's going to take on Brad Kirkhoff from Audubon in the 7th and 8th place match. Sawyer Amling from Edco in the Constellation semifinals. Tomorrow morning, he'll take on Connor Shalista from Alburnett. At weight class, 195, Tyler Hoffman from East Buchanan, one of our finalists. He's in the championship tomorrow night as he will take on Christopher Brinks from South Winnesheek Kalmar in the finals. At 220, Ryan Parmalee from Coconut Valley is also in the finals. He's going to take on Vinny Harvey, Harvey from St. Edmund Fort Dodge in the championship match. At weight class, 285, Tyler Yankovic, we just saw him win 2-1. to one. He is going to take on Landon Paulson from Woodbury Central in the finals. Weight class 113 in class 2A. Patrick Woods from West Delaware will be in the Constellation semifinals tomorrow night. He'll take on Jacob Fenske from Davenport Assumption. At weight class 126, Sam Phillips from West Delaware in the Constellation semifinals. He's going to take on Mason Miller from Winterset in that match. At weight class 138, Cody Neighbor from Beckman also in the Constellation semifinals. He's going to take on, take on Grant Sherman from Seidel in that match. Rob Rogers' alma mater, Seidel. Hey, the Eagles. There you go. At weight class 145, Chase Straw from Independence is in the se Constellation semifinals. He'll be taking on Tristan Finch from Davenport Assumption. At weight class 160, Jake Voss from West Delaware in the Constellation semifinals as well. He will take on Bo Sorensen from Forest City in that match. At 170, another Constellation semifinal for Brent Lammers as he'll take on Adam Drain from Mediapolis. This will be the second time these two have wrestled with Lammers winning that match 
in the Louisa Muscatine Tournament. At 182, Kyle Fank from Independence is in the finals. That'll be our first finalist tomorrow night as he'll take on Cash Wilkie from OABCIG, a senior at 47 and 1. And at heavyweight, Daniel Pike from Monticello's in the Constellation semifinals. He'll take on Bobby Heilman from Interstate 35 Truro. In Class 3A, our Bobcats of Western Dubuque, Austin Hosh in the Constellation semifinals. He will take on Clint Lembeck from Cedar Rapids Xavier in that match. At 152 pounds, Dylan Ganson from Western Dubuque in the 7th and 8th place match. He'll take on his first round opponent, Dion Claiborne from Sioux City North. Ganson won that match in the first round 3-1, to one, so another matchup with Ganson and Claiborne. And at 170, Max Lyon, the freshman for the Bobcats, will take on Mitchell Otto from Sioux City East in the Consolation semifinals. One thing I noticed going through that, fellas, uh, a lot of Consolation semifinals finalists, which means our area wrestlers are guaranteed no worse than sixth place. And that's, you know, that's great. You come down here uh, with high expectations, and, and we lost some. But you know what? I think, Jamie, you counted it, you counted it up. Uh, uh, we were following 28 wrestlers, and 14 of them are going to come away with some hardware. And uh, that's, that's just unbelievable. I mean, you, you'd like to have a bigger percentage, but to have half of them come down here, wrestle their hearts out, and to come away with some hardware, uh, that's just unbelievable. As tough as this tournament is, uh, they're going to they're gonna wear some hardware. We're going to see them on the podium. We certainly will, and uh, I tell you what, we are done with day two. We are ready for consolation semifinals, placing matches tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. to 2.15. We'll start with Class 2A consolation semifinals. Then we'll do the consolation semifinals in 3A and then 1A, and then we will come back and do the placing matches in 2A and then 3A and finish with 1A. Guys, uh, then it's the state finals, the championship matches, the Grand March. Zach, you've been, you were a part of that for four years. You were in the Grand March. You wrestled in the state finals twice, and uh, what an experience that is to come out there in front of all the people. Uh, it's on television, and you get to march uh, with a select few uh, wrestlers that are going to take home medals. Yeah, that's uh, something that gives you goosebumps, Jamie. Uh, coming out here with the Grand March, it's something that you've worked for all year, um, hearing that music, also being underneath uh, thousands of people. Um, it's very, very exciting, um, something that every wrestler in the state of Iowa wants to be a part of. And fortunately enough, we got a lot of area wrestlers that are able to get in there, um, take part in that grand march and then some of them uh, have a big spotlight on them for the finals um, so I'm really excited for these guys uh, great wrestling this week so far absolutely and for you West Delaware basketball fans which we are part of that group the, we will have a chance I believe we're going to get that West Delaware versus Western Dubuque basketball game on the air as our first finalist is not until 182 pounds so that will be plenty of time to get that West Delaware Western Dubuque girls basketball game on the air, so John Swisher and Bill Logan will have the call on that one. So we'll, and then we'll take it from them with Kyle Fank at 182 pounds and be ready to go with those championship matches. That's going to do it for us here tonight. I'd like to thank all of our in studio producers for today as Janelle Tucker got us going, or Mike Johnson got us going actually, and then Janelle Tucker followed by Rob Edwards and then Abby Becker finishing the night off with us. A late night. We appreciate her staying with us. I want to thank all of our sports boosters and our extra tournament sponsors for supporting us this time of year. Without them, we wouldn't be able to do what we do. And most of all, thank you, the listeners, for tuning in. And not just those of you listening on 94.7, but all of you that uh, have been following along on KMCH.com. We have noticed. We can see, we've can see. we been able to check you out. And it just gives us pleasure knowing uh, that, it's, uh, that it's hard to uh, uh, it, it's hard to get in on our broadcast when it fills up so fast uh, in the morning and in the afternoon sessions. Uh, and you know, people, it, it's always full. We always see about a hundred people listening to us every day, and we appreciate those of you tuning in to us. For my partners, Roger Reed, and Zach McCool, this is Jamie Vasky. We'll be back tomorrow with more coverage of the 2014 Iowa High School State Wrestling Championships right here on Eastern Iowa Sports Station, Mix 94.7 KMCH. Good night, everybody.